What a delivery. Thank you, Tom. Talking about delivering speeches. Welcome. Welcome to my home state of California, a state where wind and solar originated and are still booming, and a state that, to some extent, or to a large extent, previews the future of renewable energy. A state where, in 1985, a Danish firm founded a wind company that is now EDF Renewable Energy and EDF Renewable Services that operates 10 gigawatts in North America and has built 1.3 gigawatts alone in California. So I, I refer to California as my home, but as you all know, I'm not exactly native. When I arrived on January 1st, 2005 to start a new life in the US, I was young and energetic, and I had an equally young family with two toddlers and an eight-year-old. None of them spoke a word of English. And on that day, as we were heading towards Palm Spring in a minivan rental, with 10 70 pounds suitcases and 10 large carry-on that you cannot see on planes anymore, filling the space all the way to the ceiling. To be honest, I couldn't tell the difference between a megawatt and a megawatt hour. Yet, I vividly recall the feeling of excitement of starting a new professional career at the top uh, win IPP and O&M company called at the time Enexco. I also recall the satisfaction of feeling that I will be contributing to fight climate change and save our planet from the detrimental effect of climate change. Fast forward 12 years. I stand here today as an American citizen in front of you, a great assembly of bright people dedicating passion and science to the wind industry. I am really humbled and thrilled and honored to be represented the American Wind Energy Association for the year to come as chairman. Thank you for your confidence. So, thank you. So 12 years later, we are still the same industry, yet a lot has changed, as Tom was saying. In California and all over the US, we are providing affordable, reliable, clean energy, and we have, as Tom said, delivered on our promises. Indeed, today, in many parts of the country, we are the lowest cost energy resources, and we have reached high level of penetration. However, with our successes came some new challenges. Management of the grid itself needs to evolve to address new, the, those new challenges, like low gas price, basis risk, curtailment, uh, native, negative pricing. All those challenges are very manageable in the grid of the future. Some call that the smart grid. And those challenges are manageable because the grid will evolve more in the next 10 years than it has in the last 100. The grid of the future will be distributed, which means more customer choice, decarbonized, and digital. It will be a grid where artificial intelligence will be able to compile in real time huge amount of data coming from multiple generation assets and low points. From the solar panels on my roof in San Diego, from the wind farm in the Mojave Desert, from the monitoring system of the uh, air conditioning here in this convention center, from the electrical vehicle you parked in the parking lot here, from the battery pack in the supermarket a block away from here, from all those points, we will be able to manage in real time and dynamically control the grid. The agility of the grid of the future is a tremendous opportunity for wind. The grid can manage wind. There is no question about that anymore. The real challenge for our industry is actually to adapt to new power condition. Price volatility will tremendously reduce. The um, storage cost will be affordable. And even more importantly, the price of energy will remain low for the foreseeable, for foreseeable future. To compete in this low energy price environment, and for any form of generation, not just wind, but any form of generation to be built, five things need to happen. Two relates to transmission, and three to market structure. First, 
the ITPs, utilities, FERC, RTOs, ISOs need to cooperate to strengthen the grid in two ways. It starts with grid expansion. Tom mentioned it. The US grid needs more wire. It's aging. It is that simple. We need new wire to link load and renewable resources in order to provide grid stability. But also, and as importantly, we need more sophisticated and, more, and fairer market rule for the ISO to be able to better control and manage the new generation assets while still preserving the legacy investment. Secondly, the market needs to continue to evolve to, final, to financially recognize the other attributes that wind projects bring to the grid. For example, and first, ancillary services. Today we see that MISO and PJM are starting to compensate for reactive power, for example. Second, capacity payment. Very important to have in the future market structure with a low price environment. And lastly, of course, carbon reduction. One that is dear to my heart, as some of you know. These value streams need to be recognized and compensated for. I know it sounds like a long-range vision of what the market structure needs to be, but this is my vision, Tom, of what I want AWIA to pave the road for. So I know, guys, today we're all very busy competing, building, financing our project for the PTC window. And I know that the political context is a little bit challenging. However, and that's why I'm sure you're asking yourself, how do we do that? How do we change those market structure? And to be honest, I do not have a solution today, but I do have a path. And that path came, came to me in February at the uh, Wind Power Capital event when we are meeting numerous members of Congress, and I was observing their enthusiasm for wind, and I was thinking, what does, mean really, what does wind really mean to them? So I'm asking you, what does wind mean to you? Is that energy independence? Is that a drought resistant crop that brings year after year dollar to farmers and send their kids to college? Is that dozens of American manufacturing and construction jobs? Is that the best and last defense against climate change? Or is it just clean, affordable energy? For me, for all of us, it has to be all of the above. And that is the path. The path is not to choose a reason to support wind versus another. The path is not to determine in advance a political policy vehicle. The path is to capitalize on all the support the American people are giving us. 85% are in favor of more wind. The path is to be truly multi-partisan in our heart and soul. This is the brand new attitude. Now is the time to embrace and channel all forms of support that can help us forge the policies and regulation that are needed for new revenue streams to continue to help wind to thrive. A brand new attitude is that wind works for America, for all Americans. Thank you very much.